Welcome to Trading Day. Up in the busiest day yet, we have you covered as we do every night at 5 p.m., including the finale next Wednesday, which goes for at least two or two and a half hours. It's going to be amazing on Fox Footy. Like always, David King, two time Premiership player, welcome to you. you? And Ralphie, you and Glenn McFarlane broke a big story for the Herald Sun today regarding Adam Cherry. We're going to go through all the deals, but uh, bring us up to speed. Hello, guys. Well, the deals rained down today, and didn't we need them? I'll tell you what, after a pretty quiet start to trade period. So Adam Cherry goes to the Carlton Football Club after a coffee and a chat with Patrick Cripps in the last couple of days. He chose the Carlton Football Club and uh, the Blues pick six and a future third round to go to Fremantle. Tim O'Brien, the Hawthorne intercept defender, goes to the Western Bulldogs as an unrestricted free agent on a two-year deal. West Coast gave up their pick 52 to Carlton for former pick six Sam petrevsky seaton They untraded that pick 52 to the Western Bulldogs for Lewis Young. And GWS have legitimate interest in Rory Lobb, the Fremantle uh, ruck forward. I understand that that deal would be about a four-year deal to get to GWS, currently on about $700,000. He would be four years at $500,000, but a lot of water to pass under the bridge about that one. We'll talk about that one in a second. So the trade period just warming up nicely. I love it. How did you see the Adam Chera deal unfold, Kingy? Oh, it's interesting, isn't it? It depends which way you want to look at it. I mean, we, you generally talk about these things in hindsight, don't you? You need to give them, you know, one or two years to, to sort of bed down. But I think when you look at Carlton's first round recruiting the last few years, they'd have to be low on confidence. I mean, 2016 pick six... Sam petrevsky seaton who now yeah. exits the place. 2017, pick three, Dow. Pick 10, O'Brien, have hardly set the world on fire. Sam Walsh was the obvious pick one, but that draft, you, you could take a whole host of picks inside yeah. the first 10 at pick one. 20, 2019, Kemp at 17. Philp at 20, we haven't even seen them yet. And they've traded last year uh, to get Adam Saad in with the first round pick and have done the same again this year. I just, I just hope that this is not going down the same path as where Essendon were prior to Danaher and Saad and Fantasia How do you leaving. mean? Well, I, th I think the biggest currency or commodity you can have in, in list rebuilds or, or getting yourself to a point of, of contending for a flag are first-round picks. You can't get those picks wrong at the draft, and if you're going to trade them, you've got to get stars. You can't get guys who are tucked away on a half-back flank. Not sure what your thoughts are, but I think that the, the, the pick of Chera, Chera now has to go and become a star for Carlton, not a nice player. You couldn't escape the jarring contrast. So they move on to pick six in Sam petrescu seaton who is everything that this bloke... Yeah, should have been everything that this bloke will be. Inside, outside midfielder, moves laterally through traffic, kicks a goal or two, that beautiful money kick. You know, they're all the things that they should have got in pick six. They've given him up for almost nothing. You know, they weren't even going to off offer him a contract, so look, they probably couldn't have got more than pick 52. And all of a sudden, they give up six and a future third rounder for a guy who, look, I think he's everything they need, but it, but it just goes to your point of squandered draft picks. Now, um, let's just go to what Melbourne has got right now and what Carlton has got you know, how they have to bridge the gap. We know that any midfield is going to be compared to Melbourne is going to be, you know, struggling in comparison. But, you know, Paddy Cripps is the Jack Viney, the inside animal. Sam Walsh is the Clayton Oliver, can do it all. But they haven't got a, a goal-kicking mid in Petraka. They haven't got, you know, one, let alone two elite midwin in Ed Langdon and Angus Brayshaw. You know, so as much as we like what Cherit and George Hewitt are, it has to be the kids. I just think it's such a great opportunity for Michael Voss to have, you know, six or seven young kids who haven't come on. It's just putty in his hands. He was able to do it at Port Adelaide. Wasn't able to do it uh, at the Brisbane Lions. Liam Stocker was drafted as an inside mid. They play him as a half-back. You know, just a nice player. But that's not what you go up in a draft to get. Um, Matty Kennedy was traded as an inside ball. They delisted him. Had a good second half of the year when they brought him back as a rookie. He can go again. Will Setterfield was that inside-outside midfielder. Can do it all. Yeah, he just languished last year. Zach Fisher, the dashing, dashing midfielder. He just wheeled onto his left foot. They tried to turn him into a forward pocket. And then in the last four or five weeks of the, the year, they brought him back as a midfielder there. So if I'm Michael Voss, I'm aware of all that. It's all absolutely valid. But I think to myself, gosh, we've got some kids here. You know, Paddy Cripps can't get much better. Sam Walsh can get a little bit better. They're the kids that actually need to improve alongside Chera and George Hewitt. And if Vossi does it, we think this bloke's a, a coaching superstar. Isn't the Essendon story actually a good one, though, given how well Essendon have played this year? Is it slightly different? Yeah, but we're talking about list build. Yeah. And they were... They traded... Uh, three first round selections for Shield and Devon Smith. Yep. Okay, Smith won a best and fairest, and you can have you can have your own opinion on Shield whether he's you know great for their midfield or or not. Um, I, I just think prior to them scooping the pool with those three picks last year, yep. we were all saying where's this list going? Yeah. You know, is Danaher the answer? Is you know are these guys tracking towards a premiership or are they losing their opportunity? That, that's that's why I see a similarity, and I see I see the importance of these guys that 
Who is the Darcy Parish? Is Paddy Dow the Darcy Parish under Michael Voss? He'll, he'll have to be, won't he? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the conversation. So they need to get something out of those guys. Now, they're, they're only two, three years into their AFL um, life, so there's, there's clearly opportunity there. But they're going to have to come a fair way from where they were. I think Michael Voss will find three or four goals a week defensively as an improvement. But without this talent changing, would they be a contender? That, that's, that's my question. So look at the teams that have won the flags in Hawthorne and Richmond and Geelong and Collingwood. They have absolutely nailed their early picks. And so mm. that's why I think Paddy Dow is the elephant in the room. I mean, we all saw the natural improvement in him. You know, just scathing criticism from Greg Williams, who said that he had to toughen up and he wasn't desperate enough uh, last year. He had a really good start to the season. And yet, in two of the last three games, he was the sub. Yeah. So Michael Voss needs to, to find a way to absolutely light a fire under him in, that, in a way that those comments from Greg Williams probably didn't. So the bottom line is that Adam Chera has to become a top liner. Not just a nice, yeah. also ran... A best and fairest, an All-Australian. Yeah. Well, a contender to be not All-Australian in, in a couple of years, probably. Yep. He's still young. At we, some we, stage. At some stage in the yep. next two to three years, he has to be an All-Australian. Because that's contest. what you expect from your pick six, and you absolutely expect from a 21-year-old that you bring in. Um, on his birthday as well, so good news for him. Greg Williams is now at the club, which will be very mm -hmm. interesting, those conversations between him and Paddy Dow. What does this mean for Fremantle, Ralphie? And, uh, and how do they get this deal done? Um, uh, so they, they're very prepared to go young now in the draft. You know, they realise that, you know, that they have picks uh, six, eight, six and eight. Now, in a couple of pick swaps today, they've gone uh, to pick 19 and also pick 22. Uh, now, they have Will Brody, who also is in the absolute right age demographic. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I, I think what they've been able to do is get four early picks. And now, how do they get Jordan Clark? So they've got Jordan Clark, they've got picks 19 and 22. They thought that 22 would get the deal done on Jordan Clark. They realised getting 19 in the door meant all of a sudden Geelong would say, OK, we want 19. So, look, both clubs are haggling over that one. You know, I think if they eventually gave up 19 rather than 22, it could well be the, 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 the same player in yeah. the draft. But they'll go back to the draft and they'll get young. And it's probably not great news for the likes of Nathan Fife, who, who I think probably tops out in terms of age at their premiership window. But they're going to bring some young kids together, and we well, like. What do you mean by that? Do you think Nathan Fife finishes before they can win a flag, based on this um, this trade period? Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, Kingy, you were you know critical of the, their development this year. You felt like they were still a couple of years off. But I think what they feel like is that their, their flag window, and you want to open up a flag window for four or five years. Nathan Fife might at 35 still be a part of that. But that the 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 the, the, the Sarongs and the Youngs and the Ryans, Brayshaw, yeah, the Brayshaw, they're, they're the blokes that they think will you know in four or five years start a premiership window that could extend for a while. Wow. Yeah, at some point, it's, it's got to stop being the never-ending rebuild. I mean, this was the, the back end of Ross Lyon. Yeah. So the last two drafts under Ross were, were geared towards rebuilding the midfield and, and, and the like. So I think at some point, they've got, they've got to get this out of the ground. Yeah. You know, and losing Cherry doesn't help that. I think Brody's a good get. He's 23 years of age. He, he's, he's a bull inside. He's not a great runner. He's not going to be a goal kicker. But he's a clearance, he's a clearance type player. So life after David Mundy, who's, you know, 30, what is he, 35 years of yeah, age. Yeah. So, I mean, they've got to look at replacing that type of player. Um, but Ch Chera's going to be a bit of a loss. And sometimes you don't know... What you've what you've um, what you've lost till it's gone. And yeah. sometimes in a you know sometimes you get glimpses. And in a late season game two years ago, Brody smacked up Paddy Cripps. He tagged him. He had 12 possessions. He had something like 20 contested possessions himself. That's the glimpse. Yeah. We haven't seen any more than that. But he gets his chance again, and he gets a chance uh, after a really significant contract. Now gets spread over two years, and so he gets a chance without the massive pressure of that that deal. And the Suns and Brody were both keen for him to move on last year. They couldn't find a club. They found a club now. He gets a fresh start at the Dockers. Speaking of the Dockers, mm -hmm. let's stay with them. Rory Lobb, bring us up to speed here. He's got two years left on his contract, yep. but there's some uh, word that he might be on the move, Ralphie. Uh, now, this is absolutely real. So, uh, he has some interest from GWS. Uh, Fremantle are, uh, you know, open to at least exploring what this might look like for a while. Look, he's been trying to find a club for a while. Yes. Or, or more specifically, his manager, Colin Young, has been trying to find a club for him. Now, we linked him to Gold Coast. Gold Coast was interested and then realised that 700 was too rich. We linked him to Eastern Seaboard Clubs. That didn't happen. So what has happened is that um, he has had a medical. I think GWS has looked at Jeremy Finlayson moving on. We might talk about Toby Green, who's just got an extended suspension today through the AFL's yep. appeals board. So 700000 a year for the next two years. He'd sign a four-year deal on something like 500000 or $550,000. It's still really good money. So 
subsidised by, at all by Fremantle? I, I don't think it would be subsidised. So, yeah. you know, GWS have clearly, you know, been able to clear a lot of cap space over the last 18 months. And so I think what GWS are saying to themselves is that, look, you know, um, Kelly, Canelio, Whitfield, Haynes, Green, you know, they're very much in the window, or more in the window than they thought they'd be 12 months ago when they lost these players. You know, they just lost a final in which Toby was amazing, but, um, uh, but uh, you know, had some key injuries there, including Jesse Hogan. I think they think to them that they think to themselves we absolutely need another key target. Is it the right move for GWS? Do you think? Is it the right move uh, if they get Rory Lobb? That is. Yeah, it staggers me how you can have Rory Lobb on seven hundred thousand a year for starters. At when he had the, the one big year where he kicked uh, twenty nine goals in twenty four games. It's hardly. Uh, pressing for the Coleman. Three years at Frio, 13 games, 20 goals, 17 games, 10 goals, 15 games, 13 goals. So they're, they're, they're not world-beating numbers. I'm not. I'm lost on what Rory Lobb actually is. Well, he wants to be a forward. He doesn't want part to, of the reason... He, does, he doesn't want to play ruck. Yeah. It's probably a better way of putting it. OK. He, he doesn't want to play ruck, which, it, to me, screams alarm bells straight away. You know, absolute competitors go in and play ruck. Um, if you're going to play full forward at AFL level, you have to crash backs, you have to do all those sorts of things. So... Let's find out if they give what they... I mean, they know what this guy is. They've had him for five years yeah. prior to the three years at Fremantle. But, um, yeah, I'm just not sure. And Fremantle keeps saying, we want to keep this bloke. We've got Matt Tavener, we've got Tracy mm. there. So Matty Tavener hasn't played more than 16 games in any of the past five seasons. And in three of those years, they were single figures. And so there is no doubt it would put more pressure on Justin Longmuir there if all of a sudden Tavener gets injured and he's not there. But, but as we've just said... Clearly, if they feel that their premiership window is a couple of years down the track, um, you get a, you know, a significant pick for him. So right now, you know, they have got, uh, I think it's 3 and 13 GWS and 53. So they wouldn't have a, a mid-tier pick to give to him, but potentially a third club might be involved. Yeah, third club potentially involved or a future pick. But I think that's still very early, but it's absolutely on the radar for sure. I, just can't, I can't see how Rory Lobb can leave the Fremantle Dockers and the Dockers can think they're going to be better next year if Lobb goes and Cherry goes, which is what you're saying. If they're not in the window in the next two years, it changes their whole list composition. And I don't know if it's out of necessity... But why does that worry you? Well, it doesn't worry... I'm not a Doctor supporter. No, no, but why, does it, why would it worry them? If they know yep. they're building to a point in two to three seasons and sometimes you have to... You can't correct all areas of your, of your program in one or two drafts. Don't you got... want Nat Fife to be towards, like, near his best when you're playing for a flag? Not 35, as Ralphie said. Don't you just pick a block, say 20, 2023 or 2024, yeah. and say, that's where we're aiming for. And if Nathan Fife's still playing great footy, fantastic. If David, do you reckon they plan for David Mundy to still be playing no, yeah, at 35, three years ago? Yeah. So they, things, things happen. You know, facts change along the way. But I think you've got to have your target zone where you can actually contend to win a flag. If I'm Justin Longmuir, I'm on board with that. I'm on board with that, that methodical build. I'm just putting my hand up for that little two-year contract yeah. extension <laughs> over the summer, which I think will be forthcoming, though, just yeah. to make sure we're all locked in with this. I don't want to be the fall guy if, you know, the proverbial hits the fan next year. Now, if the Giants <laughs> get Rory Lobb, uh, he's going to be playing the first five rounds without Toby Green, who copped a six-week suspension today from the AFL's appeals board. Initially, it was three. It was doubled. That's what the AFL wanted. That's what Gil McLaughlin wanted. You wanted six, Kingy, so are you happy the way this played out? Yeah, 100%. Uh, we've ended up at the right spot. How we got there was uh, was comical, really. Uh, everything needs to change here. The MRO, the whole, the whole system needs to be looked at. The table, um, the, the appeals board, the tribunal members, every component of this from start to finish needs to be number one on Brad Scott's review list. And I'm sure it is. They just need this guy, Toby Green, to go 12 months without being a headline. Just play football for 12 months. Focus on what the team needs because they are, they are in contention to win the flag this year. So they just need Toby, when he gets back, to be the dominant force he has been the last couple of years. So he can't be the captain solely, potentially could be the co-captain He can there. still be the... Why can't he be the captain? Well, because he's sitting on the sidelines and he's just shown to the world that he can't, you know, keep his hands and his shoulders where they shouldn't be. Um, for me, I just think you make... Whether it's co-captains, I know Stephen Canillian doesn't want to be co-captain. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he wants. Who, whoever is best served. So whether it's all three of them as co-captains, but you can't make Toby your sole captain. Having said, we've seen what he's just done. He's seen he's potentially cost us a final. Here you are. Here's the captaincy. Who do they look at? When, they, when they're looking for influence, who do they all look at? Who do they all wait for? Who do they all say, he's our, le he's our man? It's Toby Green. Yeah, well, they, they did it to Dustin Martin, line. and Trent Cotchin was still the inspirational off-field captain and the bloke who, you know, was a more cohesive force. So Toby Green's a bit different to Dustin Martin because Toby Green's captained a lot at the Giants as opposed to Martin at Richmond, who's captained a bit, and yeah. Green's dominated those games and they performed better. So, so Sydney's had, you know, co-captains, as many as three co-captains. What do you just make? They've had four or five guys that have been capable yeah. to be sole captains. 
clearly the Giants are having this discussion because the one they made captain was an error. Mm. And I don't think any of us feel like Cornelio as the sole captain is the right decision. I don't think Cornelio should be captain. I think it's it's not good for him. I think it should be Green and someone else or just Green. But I agree, Green has to be up there at some point in the leadership group. What about Tim O'Brien at the Western Bulldogs? They've got a, a tall defender, yeah. Alfie. Well, you told us this a couple of days ago. It just yeah. took a, a couple of days to come to fruition. And so he signed a two-year deal. So he is a, an unrestricted free agent. And so the Dogs and uh, Hawthorne have done the numbers and they feel like uh, after comparable uh, trades and, uh, and free agency acquisitions, the, uh, the Hawthorne footy club will get no compensation. So Luke Beveridge had a Zoom with him on Monday and he said to him, I've got a role for you. Um, you know, I've got that Aaliyah Aaliyah intercepting role. It's almost the Alex Keith role at Adelaide. Now, I know, of course, he went to the Western Bulldogs and he's now the lockdown defender, but, yep. you know, I, I think it's a really canny move. I think Hawthorne realised when he was signed up, they tried to get him back and said, look, is there anything we can do to sign you up? But a two-year deal for him, um, you know, after um, eight years in the system where he's never really been a star forward, easy to play down back and I think it's a great role for him. Yeah, I think it's a great selection to be honest. I think that uh, when a club says to you there's a role here for you, yeah. you come and play this role, it's an easy sell as a player to accept that position. I, I think it's a smart move, cost them very little. The ruck merry-go-round continues, Ralphie and Kingy. Jonathan Segler, Peter Laddams, Darcy Fort, Mason Cox, Max Lynch, Tristan Zeri, Zeri of all, Ch sorry, Cherry of all found new homes or are looking for new homes. Um, what do you make of the way these rucks are filtering around the league almost on a yearly basis now, uh, unable to find a new home or looking for a new home? Very different to other players, aren't they? Well, just, if you just have a look at history, and, and I think this is one of the easiest spends to do through a trade period, yeah. is to acquire Acquire a ruckman for not much in terms of what you give up. So last year or this season just gone, we had Max Gorn and Luke Jackson, uh, the pair of uh, the ruck pairing for the D's. Yeah. Outside of that, for the last 15 years, the ruck combination that's won the flag has involved a traded player. So we've had Toby Nan Curvis three of the last four years, pick 46. Nathan Vardy, West Coast, was pick 72 in a trade. Then you've got Tom Boyd, who cost a fair bit, McAvoy Hale, um, you go down all the way back to Brad Ottens, Darren Jolly, Lee Brown. So, so I think it's wise to, to, to get involved here. You know, if you're spending pick 50, pick 60, it can have such a big impact. I think it's the one area on the ground where if you're short, you get exposed in big games. Yeah. I can't believe the dogs aren't active in this area at the moment because we've talked about Geelong for 10 years being short in the ruck at a crunch moment of a prelim. The way they were uh, basically dusted aside for the last 40 minutes of that grand final, the dogs need to get involved. Surely Luke Beveridge knows this. I mean, he spoke about it after several games this year, how frustrated he was at the ruck situation. That's right. Look, um, Jordan Sweet has re-signed for two more years, as I told you last night, and yet you know, they don't really play him. Now, I would have thought that John Segler would be someone who's absolutely perfect as a stopgap, but you think he's more likely to go to Geelong and not really interested in going to the yeah, Western Yeah, his preference is to play at Geelong, in which case the dogs are back to square one. Who can they pick up? Maybe they think there's no one worthwhile picking up and they're going to back in Tim English again. You know, they're going to back in Jordan Sweet and Stefan Martin's going to re-sign and maybe play half the season. But it seems to me like it's an area that Luke Beveridge has spoken about and you're speaking about, but they don't necessarily want to fill, at least not at the moment. So who, who rucks for them? First centre bounce of a preliminary final, 2022, who's taking it? Well, I would hope that by that stage that it's Tim English. So Tim English has had chats with his manager, Andrew McDougall. Now, he was probably lighter and more agile because they wanted to play him as a forward. And I think, you know, I think the commitment's been made. Bulk up. Don't get thrown out of the contest, as we saw in that Christian Petraka goal where you were really critical of him at the fall of the ball and just made no, absolutely no impact there. And so, yeah, for me, that Segler role, who um, you know, potentially might only be on $150,000 at that club. Hawthorne might pay two years of it, and the dogs have got some picks. I just think they'd be negligent if they didn't go for him. Now, just quickly on Peter Laddams. So, uh, right now, Port Adelaide is saying that his preferred home is the Sydney Football Club. Now, he's, his management saying, well, that's not necessarily the case. You know, you're getting the cart ahead, ahead of the horse. But I, I think it's very likely that he will get to Sydney. Hawthorne is out of the race for Peter Laddams. So, Sydney would have to give up a, a reasonable pick. Port Adelaide maybe would give a, a pick back. What do you think of that Sydney ruck situation? Because um, they'd certainly have a lot of ruckmen there and, and maybe, you know, too many ruckmen's never enough. I, I love it. The Swans yeah. have always had four or five ruckmen on their list. They've had a lot of problems with injuries over the last few years, but their ruckmen in particular, he, he could play 60% forward, 40% ruck, 70-30. Um, I, I think he's a talent, there's no yeah. doubt about that. And, and that, that extra tall position forward of centre for Sydney has hardly been rock solid in terms of the fill. We've seen Sam Reid come in and out of that team. We saw Amadi in patches over the last 12 months. Blakey was down there 18. 
18 months ago. So that position itself has been a problem for them to fill. He may serve as um, two issues. And you look at his raw numbers. So 13-5 in terms of goals last year, 228 hit-outs. I mean, you'd love him to, to uh, turn into the player who can kick 25 and have 300 uh, hit-outs. But I think he's capable of that. He's only yep. 23, only three years in the system. You want players with upside. And the Sydney Swans have picked 12 and 31. It would have to be a future first rounder. At least that's what Port Adelaide would want. We're going to talk about the winners and the losers from the trade period after the break. Also, the Adelaide Crows are on the agenda. But on November 24, it's the Fox Footy National Draft. And as always, you can watch it right here on Fox Footy. We talk about the players, but we should mention the families who ride every bump of the roller coaster that is a, a young man's football journey. Uh, right around Australia, right now, are right on the edge of this. Well, they, they are. With pick two, the Adelaide Crows have selected Riley Philthorpe from West Adelaide. <laughs> got mauled on the couch there a moment ago. The family went crazy. With pick 17, Oliver Henry from the Geelong Falcons. With pick nine, the Essendon Football Club have selected Archie Perkins from Sandringham Dragons. A wonderful smile there and a tear in the eye. The Western Bulldogs have matched the Adelaide Crows' bid for Jamara Bugelhagen from the Oakley Chargers. What a moment. What a special, beautiful moment. Oh, it is. Look, those, those pictures are, are just absolutely brilliant, aren't they? The emotion, it gets to work very shortly, but, but what a moment for the family. Welcome back to Trading Day. That's the Formula One Grand Prix. That's on tomorrow night, 7pm, live on Foxtel. And you can go straight from Trading Day into the Formula One Grand Prix tomorrow night. Ralphie, uh, let's talk about Jordan Dawson. This is a deal that doesn't look like it's getting any closer. No, that's right. Adelaide says they're trying very hard. So they've offered various permutations of pick 17, pick 17 in the sweetener. Now, the latest offer will be a, a future first rounder, which is now Melbourne's pick for Jordan Dawson. They'll offer that to the Sydney Football Club. So Sydney keeps saying we want pick four, we want some permutation of four. Adelaide's just saying that's not going to happen. We need to just keep bringing young kids. So they'll take that mid, uh, that first round selection, which is Melbourne. So it could be 15, 18. And if that doesn't happen, I think Adelaide feels like Sydney won't accept anything less. We're off for the pre-season. They don't want to do it, but they did it with Jackson Haightley when GWS, you know, thought that they would bend or buckle. There's a lot of talk about brinkmanship. But Adelaide and Justin Reid have a proven track record. We just did it last year. What do you think, guys? So, look, I think Sydney would be prudent to accept that Melbourne future pick. It's not officially on the table. It will be. Um, what do you think about just dragging players through to the pre-season draft? Yeah, well, that's that's one of the advantages of finishing down the bottom of the table. You do hold that strength in a pre-season selection. I'm not against it. It's, a, it's an ugly way to finish the negotiations, but it's, it's ultimately the power to the Adelaide Crows. I wonder, Ralphie, if we can look at the pre-season picks, and particularly pick one in a pre-season. Why isn't that a tradable commodity for, for, for all clubs. So it's the Kangaroos this year with pick one. Mm -hmm. what, what couldn't they auction that back to Sydney? And, yeah, well, get, and, that. and get a pick. For, you know, it might be a third round pick or something. Then Sydney can say, well, if you don't take him, we're yeah. actually taking him back. Or Port Adelaide could jump in. So Why you, isn't yeah. that a, trade, a tradable, usable tool? Yeah, so you use the leverage for Callum Coleman-Jones. You say, Richmond, take pick 38. And then once you've used that one, all of a sudden you trade it off to someone else. I think it's ridiculous that players don't want to go through the pre-season draft. They keep saying, oh, I want to be helpful to my former club. You know, all of a sudden you've got to give up a, a good pick for them. They should be wanting to win a premiership. Mm. And getting through to the pre-season draft might preserve a pick six or ten or eight. You know, I know we're old-fashioned and there's loyalty, but I think in a brutal, hard environment, stuff you, my old club, I'm stuff, winning a flag. You, I'm winning no, a flag but and getting through to the pre-season draft's going to help. <laughs> Jordan Dawson told Adelaide and Port Adelaide that, that he wants to do what's best by Sydney, but surely he's thinking, no, no, I want to do what's best by myself and the club I'm going to. You two have been in the media too long. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Get your roots. Uh, Kingy, who's winning and losing the trade period at this point? Well, no one's winning and losing, really, let's be honest. Okay. We don't know for a couple of years, but just looking at the, the inactivity of a few... So I've gone losing the Hawks because they've put every, every name on the table mm. and there's really not been a lot of nibbling. There's no. been, you know, the talk about Segler, he may go, they might pay for most of his salary, all those sorts of things. So I've got Hawthorne as losing. I think Gold Coast the big winners and I'll tell you why they're the big winners. It's not because they got picked three this year and three only. Next year they'll have a whole suite of picks and that may be for Stuart Jew or it may be for Alistair Clarkson. <laughs> hey, look, this is what we've got coming in. So my winner right now is North Melbourne. I'm in love with Jason Horn francis and I think they will get Callum Coleman-Jones. Yeah. exactly what they need is the heir apparent there to Tol Goldstein. My loser is Brisbane because they haven't even got enough money to push back 
uh, ca salary cap space and maybe get into Jack Gunston. I just think they've done nothing and they've lost a lot of finals in recent years. My winners at the moment, or who's winning, is Melbourne. They've got oh, pick 17 no. oh, in. Yeah, no, I believe it. They've built oh. pick 17 in from the second round and they've picked up Luke Dunstan for nothing. Joey loves Luke Dunstan. You love Luke Dunstan. He's not Lee, he's yeah, yeah, he's not Lee Matthews. He's Jack no, he's Dunstan. not, but he's a good depth player. I just think Melbourne have done it superbly so First hard. time I've heard you talk him up. <laughs> <laughs> and my losers, at the, or my, the team that's losing at the moment, the Swans, because they need to get that deal for Dawson Dunn pretty Never soon. If they don't, then he can positive. walk to the preseason draft. Never been positive. If you Dunstan disagree, Ever. I'll talk to you about it tomorrow night or another time. That's all we've got time for on Fox Footy. We'll see you tomorrow night. Same place, same time.